singing is the Cherokee Eagle Song and that introduces my theme today. I will call it the Assembly of the Eagle Chief of Turtle Island. The mind is itself sacred. This eagle feather is the thought that makes it so. Yatehe Yes, the Navajo reading basically means all is well. That's the short form. The long form is Ahoyo Yahate, and that's called the Great Prayer of Liberation. It goes down beneath the earth to the spirits, and goes up to the sky, to the sky beings, and back down to the earth. It's the trunk line of the resonance, the sympathetic resonance that opens into the pistol of the flower of peace. And this is the, the great prayer for everything there. Let's start right off with, this was from a song I heard a long time ago. And I'm just speaking it like a poem. Under the road, paved with stone, an ancient heart still beats, and the question won't be done until the truth is finally known. If the tree could tell the story of the people of this land, that in the heart of the desert there is a flower beneath the sand, and of promises made to last forever, and the lives of indigenous people have forgotten, that pass away like souvenirs. Now the eagle calls out for liberty, a coyote stands up to hear. So this way that we are introducing eagle, chiefly the eagle here, that uh, the English word is the bald eagle. Navajo is ta jitle like the meaning the white-headed eagle. So mainly that's what we're be talking about here. For the the shaman of Native America, um, the eagle is the mysterious magical bird which pauses in flight for a moment in order to give us humans hope and purpose. And along with that, the shaman and medicine people live under the wing of that eagle, which we know is the bird of wisdom, the bird of freedom. And we nourish it with our dedication and our integrity. The flight of that spirit bird is straight ahead. And so, we had better be thinking that that bird is not flying around and will be returning and that either we get with it or we be left behind. It's decisive, see? To begin with a kind of a, a story, um, changing woman in Navajo, Asana Ilihe, she is the great sovereign of Turtle Island. You can say her name for one that she changes with the seasons and she's always renewing herself. So basically that's who she is. She has two sons. They are called, you know, younger brother, older brother, or their epithet is born for water, and monster slayer, or enemy slayer. <clears throat> and so uh, they're, you know, mythical kind of beings like that, and, and very many stories are of that. So 
Jesus to say in this sense, you know, younger brother and older brother. And then there's Coyote, and that he is that shape-shifting uh, medicine man who has unlimited power to enter in and interfere in the lives of people. So we can kind of start with that. Something has happened with uh, older brother. He's you know, transgressed something, and what he needs is to have a sing. A sing is a curing ceremony that's conducted by a hatali, means chanter. He would be like the medicine man. So younger brother, he's kind of going around looking for, for one, who, who is that going to be? Because there's many, many, many of these hatalis, and you have to find the right one. So while he was going around, he encountered, you know, Coyote. And Coyote told him, he said, I, I, know, I know just the Hatali you need, you know, and I know what that Hatali is going to require. He's going to require some eagle feathers. And so you're going to have to get those eagle feathers. And so I'm going to tell you, you know, where those eagles are, where you can get up into their nest and get those eagle feathers. So Coyote brought younger brother over to this tall, rock, way up on that rock, you could look up there and you could see you know, some fluffy whitish eagles up there. So he told younger brother, he said, now you, you climb up, climb up at that rock, and it's, it's not too far, you can reach it like that, <clears throat> and then you can get those feathers and come back down. So a younger brother, he climbs up this rock and up there. And that these eagles really turned out to be crows that painted. They were painted, and Coyote painted them with white clay so they would look like eagles. And Coyote's going, he said, how do you like your beautiful eagles? You know, like that. And at the same time, Coyote started blowing on that rock. And that rock grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow, grow, grow. Very, very tall. So tall and so steep, the younger brother can't get back down. Well, that put him right up in approximation with a hole up there in the sky. So he had to make a few test trials before he finally figured out how he could step off the top of this rock and into the world where he's on the level with. So he, he does. He finally makes it in there. And he goes around. And what it is, it's like a community or communities of um, feathered birds, you know, different, you know, there's, there's the hawks there and different kind of uh, birds and, of course, the eagles. He somehow is taken in by the community of the eagles. And a lot happens. Uh, what also takes place in this is that while the eagle is the chief of all feathered flyers, <clears throat> there is also the star people. So being up there in the sky, he is, you know, in the proximity also of the, of the star nations. <clears throat> and the chiefs of the star nations is Great Star, Soto, and so also called Black Star. And that becomes sort of his mentor that kind of guides him around. What's, what's happening in the process, make a long story short, because a lot of things happen, he's learning, and he's, he's learning medicine. Medicine is healing, and so forth. So that's what he's acquiring, so he begins to take on, you know, something that he hadn't been before, we'll call it knowledge of healing, rituals, things like that. And so we come up to this point where the eagles, now it's not exactly to say that they have an enemy, but certainly a menace. And this menace are the stinging wasps. And these, these wasps, you know, um, uh, are a menace to the eagles because they can fly through the feathers and sting them, sting the eagles. And so now the eagles are called that there and say there's a swarm of those stinging wasps, wasps, you know, um, that's what they are. <laughs> and we have to go out there and confront them. We have to deal with them. Um, but, you know, you're, you're from the earth and earth people really aren't supposed to be around in all of this, you know. But our younger brother says, well, I really, I really want to go and see how that this, this happens. So they you know, kind of put on an eagle suit for him so that he, he, he can go with them. But the wasps are not going to sting him because he's really not of the eagle people. So really no danger that he's actually going to be stung by the wasps. <clears throat> so anyway, that there is this confrontation with the wasps and many of the eagles are injured 
or even died uh, because of this uh, confrontation with them. And uh, then a younger brother, he goes about, he's got a basket somehow, and he's going around, and off the dead eagles, he's gathering feathers, because that's originally why he came up there, to you know, get these feathers. <clears throat> um, but somehow in the process of it, he process, he realizes how he can you know, cure the, the eagles of these deadly wasp stings. So he does revive them. And of course, this really puts them in really high prestige there with, with the eagle community. So he has gathered a lot of, of knowledge there. And now he is going to descend back to the earth. My painting here, you can look there, so you can see that this is what's going on in my painting. This is younger brother, we're referring to him that way, that he's about to descend back to the earth. As he descends through the earth, the star, you know, puts a special kind of mist around him. He goes through different layers. Um, totally, he's, you know, totally made as a mystery, so nobody can see him coming from the sky world in down to the earth. But he does come down here, and here I have this little bear wearing his eagle uh, suit like there. Now the bear is a healer, so that we, we have a synonym there that this is younger brother. Now he is a healer and he has brought the knowledge of the eagles and the knowledge of the star nations, you know, for people to have the ceremonies or rituals or sayings for healing. So that's basically this story that we have going on here. So let me follow that with this little piece. Um, the Hopi culture over there in Arizona, Claudia and I, we used to live in Arizona and uh, we had friends there in, in the Hopi Mesa, and we did attend a very special um, event, we call it ceremony, which they sealed off um, the roads, you know, into the Mesa for, from outsiders to cover this. And what they were doing was that they were basically, we call it, initiating the fifth sun, a, a kind of age. Now this had already been happening in ancient Mexico. Somehow, at the time that the uh, invaders from Spain arrived, uh, the, the ancient Mexicans were already looking at that this was the fifth sun. So, but now we were attended the Hopi one, so that's why I'm putting them together. Um, and uh, near the end of this fifth sun, this an age, you know, monsters will start uh, to show up. They're coming to devour humankind. And what it's about is that at the apex of, of a society, it reaches a, a, a pinnacle of growth. And then it begins to um, manifest its shadow aspects. <laughs> the shadow knows aspects that been, have been harboring in the unconscious. So now, and that's where we are right now, we, we are. Uh, so now it becomes a collective challenge to recognize these aspects and to seek the unity through a union with those things that have been left out. You know, the new president-elect, you know, he said the other night, you know, we have got to come to terms with these things. I mean, he's, you know, definitely being very definite about that. This ancient Native American and Mexican myth isn't just another metaphor, but it is actually to foretell the arrival of an autonomous, new, old, transpersonal entity. And so, raring and ready to carry this through, to carry through this coyote perspective. Hakia. So we can get, get along with that, with this story here that you see. <clears throat> now I'm going to go down here. You look at this. This is the great seal of the United States. Now I have to tap into 
history that is the origin of the Republic of the United States. Where the people from uh, Northwest Europe or England particularly were, were up in the northeast of Turtle Island. And this was definitely in the area called the Iroquois, to give it the simple, the Iroquois League. The Iroquois League was a federation of five First Nations, you know, originally, and that this had been initiated by the great peacemaker, Takanoeda. And uh, when these people came there from Europe, actually they were in different parts of this country we're calling, you know, the uh, Iroquois League. Um, kind of spread, spread them out. American propaganda has kind of made these people colonists, but they really weren't to begin with. Maybe later on they became that. But they really are, you know, rather in the, in the country of the Iroquois, the Haudenosaunee. And Benjamin Franklin, if I got my, my story straight, you know, spent some time with them and from that he learned about, he learned about this federation and how that they governed themselves. And that's, you know, became, you know, the beginning for the idea that developed into what we now are calling the United States. <clears throat> and uh, I want to show this right here to fit in here. This is the seal of the Iroquois, the Haudenosaunee. And in particular, I, I don't have it in color, but you can see it. Um, you see a, a group of five Stone Age arrowheads, arrows, what they are. And they're surrounded by what we call a wampum belt. You know, it's a very particular one. These are made out of very special shells, and the word wampum has been applied to them. They're not money. This is a, a convent, a convent of peace. And it is from this that I'll show you has evolved into the Great Seal. Now, in Washington, they call it Washington, is uh, the White House and the capital of the White House that recently, you know, has uh, suffered a assault is what it's being called. Now, the White House in um, is <laughs> is actually the White House, and that is the Hogan Lilige, that is is in the capital of it. This is the White House, and this is the sacred place. The dome on it, and that is a, from Italian architecture, and this developed into what eventually became, in Europe, the cathedral. So, the cathedral definitely styled this. And we have, you know, churches and missions here that have vestiges, you know, of that. Even the uh, Navajo Hogan, the Hogan, also is domed over the top of it. So, this is all something that's a, a cupola that uh, has evolved here. So, it has an architectural history to it, and it's become very much um, uh, an emblem, I can call it an architectural emblem, of something sacred that the word cathedral comes into it. So this capital that we're referring to, and everybody knows what it looks like, it's, it, it's in, our, in our minds, is the Cathedral of Democracy. This is the Cathedral of Democracy. <clears throat> and the eagle in the seal holds arrows. He holds a, you know, a, a, a fistful of arrows. In one sense, you know, these are the arrowed men. In the, the assault, the arrowed men were the security police who were defending the sacred place. The Cathedral of Democracy is the seat of the eagle. So this is a very sacred place. And all over throughout the building there there is the great seal of America and I should say referring back to the Iroquois League the symbol of the Iroquois League was the eagle here and this eagle is the white-headed eagle they call the bald eagle and 
So in one fist you see the the arrows here, and in the other fist this is the olive branch, which is meaning peace. And here, in front of the eagle, these red and white stripes, you know, this denotes that he's sacred, that he's a sacred person here. And above him is the field of the stars, the star nation. The star nation, I told you, the vitalities, you know, of the snake people, and the vitality of the animal people, coyote, and then there's the vitality of the star nation. And the star nation is gives us, humans here, gives us the order. It's a vitality that gives us a governance and an order. So it's very uh, relevant that above the eagle there is the uh, plaque of the star, the star nation. Again, that the red and white stripes, you know, shows that this is a sacred uh, being there. And all of this is very relevant to us now because the bees, the wasps, the stinging wasps, had attacked this cathedral of democracy. And the arrowed men, you know, defended it, defended it even to death. And the intent of the bees was, of course, to kill the people inside. They said so, that they were going to do that. But they did not, because the eagle protected the people inside. Even you see, uh, we see the Speaker of the House and different things. There's the flag of the United States. And behind her, there's the eagle flag. You see the eagle flag. <clears throat> it's folded so you can see the head of the eagle poking out from the fold. And the flag's poles on top have a gold eagle with spread wing um, surmounting that. So all of this you see that all Native Americans, we know this. We know that this is who it, we respect. <clears throat> and wherever that seal is, it can be on a car, it can be on a building, it can be on somebody's uniform, like that. We always respect that, because we know who that is. And that's the way I'm telling you all of this here. I want to refer to some other things that I have here before I go into another part. Over here, I have, this is a an eagle staff, we call it. If, if, if it's in um, you know, a ceremony or a powwow, they're going to call it the flag. This is the, the eagle's flag. <clears throat> and the eagle that we're having here is the one, it's the white-headed eagle. And uh, Anunkunsa is the Iroquois, I mean not the Iroquois, the Lakota name for the bald-headed eagle, the white-headed eagle which is very interesting because it means something that has two sides to it. It has two sides to it. Um, where the, the um, Navajo are just designating that this is the white eagle. And that is, it can also be, you know, Atzalagai. And what, in the context of the Southwest, in this one, the white, it means um, uh, spiritual, spiritual, that this has spiritual power, that this has spiritual potency. And of course, anyone who has seen the white-headed eagle flying there in the sky, that white is so bright, it is so brilliant, uh, it is really amazing. It, it definitely makes us feel we are indeed in a spiritual transmission whenever we have seen it and we have real special occasions where that spirit bird appears to us. So that's the piece that I have over there for that. If I can go right up above that. <clears throat> this is a very, very ancient pipe. The, the, the head of the pipe, the bowl of the pipe, is made out of stone. It's kind of green, greenish. And it's a very early one of the eagle thunderbird. And this is from the Adena culture, and this pipe is, I would say, uh, 2,500 years old. 
And this is the oldest evidence that we have and why I, I love having it is of Native American sculpture, we can call that. I mean, my, many other things, you know, made out of wood or other items of wood have uh, usually deteriorated over such a time. So I really want to have this here to show our uh, reverence, you know, for we are calling the eagle. Well, the eagle throughout the, the uh, eastern part of Native America is the golden eagle. And the, the golden eagle that's being venerated is also her. She's the female uh, of the eagles. The black eagle, brown eagle, or spotted eagle are all variations on the gold eagle. But here in the southwest, the white-headed eagle has become very significant because the whiteness tells us that this is spiritual power, spiritual potency. And that's what we very much care about here. <clears throat> and I have a star over there to represent you know, the great star. Now we're going on to another little part of the story. So I started out that there are twins, and it is younger brother and older brother. Younger brother, born for water, he very much, you know, tends towards the female. You know, his insignia is actually a hair tie that the woman ties uh, her hair in a kind of a bun. <clears throat> and so most everything associated with him has to do with the female. Now. The one we're calling older brother. Now he's called monster slayer or enemy slayer. Um, actually, the whole means is that he is ridding the country of um, alien gods, and so very often uh, people refer to him in exactly that manner. <clears throat> so he's you know more aggressive, more warlike than his younger brother, and you know he's very. Um, powerful in this to rid our country of alien gods is pretty much what his name is meaning there. And the things that I have to go with it here, it, over here, these are, we call them sand paintings here. And the emblem for him, for Monster Slayer, Enemy Slayer, is the bow. Here it is, it's the white string, dark bow. So this is, this is a very happy, proud, you know, to have had this piece. This was made for, by a Navajo man, Achidi J. Um, uh, what's his name? Sp his Spanish name, Costillo. Costillo. Achidi um, J. Costillo. And he's titled it, um, the arrow, it's, it's like a piece, the arrow people protecting spirit. And so we have very much the arrows, the, the arrows that we have that have begun, you know, here with, with the uh, seal of the Iroquois. Now the, the arrows, you know, came into Native America somehow like beings, you know, not exactly spirit beings, but they regarded, you know, definitely as beings. The Japanese would say they're kami. And so they've all, always been considered and regarded that way. Categorically, they're tools. They're made a certain way, and over the years they pretty much would stay pretty much the same. But in the Native Americans' uh, perspective, they're, they're beings, and they're beings, you know, that have a regard and a respect and even we could say certain powers. So that's very necessary there. And I've replicated this symbol of the arrow people. That's the Ka'a Dene, Ka'a Dene. And that's their emblem of their protecting spirit. And I do have an ancient um, arrow here, the stone head, arrowhead here. And so wherever 
on the rocks or if, anywhere that, that people want to symbolize these two brothers, they will always make this sort of a X looking cross for younger brother that symbolizes hair tie and for older brother, Monster Slayer, it's always the bow. And so up here I have a small ceremonial bow with the ceremonial arrows in it. Now with that I'm going to do read a little prayer. Now starting with, you know, um Yatahe and the Ahoyo Yatahe. I'm doing short forms and long forms that we have in Tai Chi. So these are all short forms that I'm doing in all of this. So uh Naye Nisagani is the name for Monster Slayer. And this is, you know, a prayer, you know, a ceremony, uh, a ritual ceremony in short form. From the center of the earth, enemy slayer with his white string dark bow comes in to search for me. With lightning flashing all around him, he comes in. With a rock crystal and a sacred cigarette, he comes in. Farther on, beyond that place, at the door of the White Hogan, where two coyotes lie with their heads turned, enemy slayer tosses those apart with his white string dark bow. Farther on he comes where two red owls lie with their heads turned, and from behind as the traveler in darkness he comes. Farther on as he returns with me through four white-headed eagles, enemy slayer returns with me, whirling his white string dark bow about himself for protection and lightning flashing all around. He returns with me as the rainbow returns with me through the water. Now the, the small sand painting is exactly that prayer that I just read. There's the four white-headed eagles and enemy slayer in the center holding arrows and lightning. So that's a a wonderful a small painting. Now the way of making these paintings, as, as far as I know, I've seen it o only once in Arizona, um, is the same way that the Hatali makes them on the floor of the Hogan, you know, through his fingers. So all the colors and everything are all gathered from natural things. Some of them are just even ground up uh, like bluebird feathers, you know, I mean all kinds of things. So there's quite a lot of knowledge went into this. And somehow, I don't know how, but somebody has devised some kind of adhesive so that it, everything is there, you know, but it, it doesn't disappear. The one that they do in the, in the Hogan, you know, they're going to collect, sweep up the sand and take it in a special place and deposit it. So you always have that. And again, to recollect that the White House in Washington is the Hogan Lugay. That is the White House. In the Navajo world, there's another White House to give an example. It's called White House Ruin in Canyon de Che. And these were referring to the, the people we're calling Anazazi, their earlier people. Thousands, there's thousands of these sites of, of buildings made out of rock, brick, and, and adobe, like that. <clears throat> so this one is that, it, it's, that's what it's called, <clears throat> the White House. And this is the home, or the seat, of the supernaturals, the Ye. The Ye, that this is their seat, it's a White House room. So now we're saying, the White House in Washington, this is the cathedral of our democracy. All of this has come from here, our Turtle Island in our Native America. So to really have that view and to see that it was, you know, the the wasp, the wasp, you know, who tend to be a menace and seem to want to attack, you know, the seat of of our eagle there. So we can see all this that's actually really happening. You know. um, also I should add to that younger brother also figured out how that the wasps were able to uh, 
the effect is injuries on the eagles. They have stingers. So he figured out what the stingers were and he destung them. <laughs> he, he figured out how he could, you know, um, deprive them of their stingers. And when he did that up there, then he sent them to earth to be a benefit for people because they now no longer were harmful. So we were looking for that um, autonomous, all-powerful stinger puller outer to, <laughs> to show up and to defang the wasps <clears throat> so uh, there can be no more harm, you know, to our White House, our Hukenlegai, and the seat of uh, the eagle. So we want to finish this again with the eagle song of the Cherokee. A Aho. 